Hey, Dan Lusinski, Dark Angel Cutlery. I'm uh, inside my house today, not inside the shop, uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, the main reason being that I'm not forging today, and I'm actually doing some leather work, something I really enjoy uh, in the knife making process. Um, leather work is where I started my knife making journey. Uh, at the time, I had been uh, reconditioning knives for customers and uh, for myself. Uh, I've been had purchased a lot of a lot of knives that came with kydex sheets or those injection molded plastic sheets and i really just didn't feel like they suited my needs or really were the type of sheet that i uh, i liked to carry uh, so the knife sheet that i'm working on in here today is for a german hunting saber that i've been working on and i'm very excited that the german hunting saber is uh is complete but uh the whole package isn't complete until the sheath is done so i won't be sharing the knife today but I will share the sheath that I'm working on, and I'm actually on the last legs of stitching. Um, this is the, uh, the sheath for the German hunting saber, and because of the size of the sheath, you kind of get an idea of, uh, of how big this knife is going to be. It is a very large knife. Um, we're uh, at the last little bit of stitching here, and I'm doing something called a track stitch with uh, the use of my stitching awl. And uh, basically to start this, you pull out uh, from the spool, you take enough length of uh, leather stitching cord for three times around the perimeter of the sheath. And that's just my rule of thumb. If I take three times around the perimeter of the sheath, I usually have enough cord to finish a track stitch. And when you start a track stitch, you start up at the, uh, well, I started here at the beginning of my sheath. And I stuck the awl through. Well, of course, I had to wind all that uh, stitching cord that I pulled off. I had to wind that onto the spool of my awl. And I stuck my awl through, and from the back side, I pulled out enough cord to go uh, one and a half times around the perimeter of the sheath. And that gave me enough to um, track stitch around the back side. Now, when you're doing a track stitch, basically, if you have an awl, you are, you're pushing the awl tip through, and the awl tip the tip of the awl actually is uh, has the lace coming right through that, and there's kind of a, a loop over that uh, over that uh, that eye of that needle. So when you stick the needle of the awl through the uh, through the sheath, it comes out the other side. And I guess instead of explaining it, why don't I show you? That's probably a lot easier. So what I do here is uh, usually I have a surface here to work on, but because of uh, where I have my camera mounted, I'm just going to go ahead and do it in my hands. So I've, uh, I've gotten yay far, and of course I have my tail, that little bit I told you I pull through, and I start with my, my awl here, and I make sure that the, uh, the, the, the dangling little bit of uh, thread I have there is at the bottom. And uh, I pick my, my next hole, because all these holes were pre-punched, and obviously the, the sheath has been glued together, the layers of leather have been glued together. So I find the next hole, and I push that all right through. And all should go through pretty easy as long as those holes line up, and it does. So I get that all through the other side, and I start to back it away a little bit. And you'll see a loop starts to become, uh, become visible there. Now that loop is the loop that we're going to take our uh, our tail here, or our, our backside uh, stitch, st <laughs> stitching cord, and we're gonna send it through that loop. Now, when we send it through that loop, we are uh, making a new uh, stitch in the track stitch. It's basically binding the front and back um, leather stitching cord uh, to the leather. It's kind of making a, making a complete loop. So now I've sent it through that loop, I'm going to take it and I'm going to wind it around my fingers a little bit so I have a good firm grip on it. Now this is the really important part and uh, if you're not used to stitching leather you'll find this to be a little painful and it is the first few times you're going to build up some calluses on your fingers because I'm really going to pull this cord as tight as possible and that can dig right into your skin and into your fingers. So I wrap around my fingers a couple times I pull a nice firm grip and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to back this, um, this all right back out. And I'm going to pull on the front side, you're going to see there's a little extra thread. I'm going to pull that nice and tight, and it's going to, it's going to suck it right into the leather. Well, it's going to pull it through the leather. Okay, now I've got my awl here, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the back side. I'm going to wind around my fingers a little bit and make sure i got a nice firm grip. Then usually I'll take the sheath and I'll, I'll brace it in my, either in between my, my legs here or brace it under my armpit. I'm going to pull as tight as I can. <sighs> And don't worry about breaking the thread. This thread is super strong. Pulling that as tight as possible. 
looks like I got a nice successful stitch. And then I'm gonna repeat. I'll take this needle, I'll take a good look, make sure I can find the next hole. Punch that all right through again. Now, like I said, I pre-punched the holes for my stitching, so the all needles should go through nice and easy, but we did glue this. And uh, leather weld glue, or um, you can also use Elmer's glue, it's pretty much the same thing to, to glue uh, leather together. Um, it does get in the holes a little bit. So when I punch that all through, that's the only resistance I'm getting is a little bit of, little bit of excess glue that's built up on there. And uh, same thing, find the next hole and punch that all through the next hole. And like I said, I brace the, brace the leather between my knees. I can work on a hard surface too, and it's really easy to punch that all through if you've got a, a hard surface you're working on. And I have a little piece of MDF board or particle board that I, uh, that I do my stitching on and my stamping and stuff. And I don't know if you noticed when I showed you the leather sheath, I did a little stamping on this. I took um, uh, skull and crossbones and some flowers and I kind of made a, you know, uh, a macabre, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah. Kind of like a symbolic of death. A lot of times you'll see death associated with flowers and skulls and bones. and. So I've got some floral pattern and some skulls and crossbones, and I inverted the skull and crossbones uh, on one side, and then uh, it's straight up and down the other side. And the reason I did that was because this sheath is going to be uh, going to have a couple different carry options. It's going to be able to be worn like a traditional sheath, um, you know, uh, through the belt loop on the side of your hip. And uh, I've got, if you noticed, I've got a uh, a D ring down at the bottom here. Now that's of course for a leg tie if you're wearing it on your side through the belt loop, but the optional carry method is going to involve um, some strapping that I have here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this strapping and we're going to flip this sheath right upside down and we're gonna take the strapping and I have some rivets that are, uh, are threaded so you can screw them down and unscrew them. And we're gonna punch a hole uh, right about here and we're gonna punch a hole right about here and we're gonna fold that over. Uh, we're gonna put it through the D-ring, fold it over, uh, put that rivet through and screw it down. And we're gonna do that in the front and we're gonna also do that in the back through the D-ring. And that's gonna allow us, without stabbing myself with a, with a sewing awl here, it's gonna allow us to put it over our shoulder here and put her arm through and basically it's going to make a uh, sort of like a, a body harness or a chest harness. Now if anyone carries a, a firearm you know that um, there are chest rigs that you can wear so your firearm is in the front that way you can draw out the chest especially if you're a hunter or an outdoorsman. It's not always convenient to wear it on the hip especially if you're wearing like a tree harness and you're hunting. Nice to have that revolver right in the front you can draw and, uh, and finish your kill. Um, you can wear your knife that way also, especially, like I said, you could be wearing some type of repelling harness or a tree harness, and it's just not going to allow you to have a, uh, a knife sitting on your hip. So, allow me to show you. Uh, this sheath would be worn inverted or upside down, and that's why I mentioned I have the, uh, the skull and crossbones inverted. And right now, they're the top one you probably can't see, but that one's for when it's carried on the belt. So this would also go through the belt loop like it normally would. And you see you have the, the loop here. And uh, I stitched. I didn't use any rivets. A lot of time when I'm doing a belt lip loop, I'll rivet that down. And uh, then I'll cover the inside of the rivet within the sheath with a piece of leather so it doesn't scratch the knife. But we did stitching this time. We also stitched our, uh, our D-ring there, made it very strong. So this would go through the belt loop also on the left side if you want. You could also wear this on the right side and cross draw with your right hand. But... I carry a firearm in the woods like a lot of uh, like a lot of us do, hunters or or just uh, outdoorsmen alike. But I'm going to also put a buckle on this shoulder strap. I've got a nice little brass uh, tandy leather buckle here, and these type of buckles are really nice. I, I think they call them saddle buckles, or uh, there's a couple different names for them. But you can see it's kind of um, it's kind of angled. And that's going to allow us to make a cut here in this uh, in this strap. And we're going to put one punch on one side. And we're going to put like three or four punches on this side. And that will allow us to adjust how tight this strap is. That way, uh, for people with longer torsos can have a little more length here. And for people with shorter torsos, they could tighten this up. And that will bring the sheath up nice and high on their chest in the front here. And the belt loop will be through the belt, obviously but you'll have your handle down here at a good height. You can grab the handle and you can pull it out. 
Now, the knife is going to be secured very well because obviously if we're inverting a knife on our chest, we don't want to lose that knife. And um, yeah, I hate to see a, uh, a custom knife get lost out in the woods. So what I've done here is uh, I've uh, riveted a, uh, also with a threaded rivet, I've riveted a, uh, a retention strap here. And then you see there's one hole already started there for our uh, inside of our snap and we'll make, uh, once we've got the knife inside there to, to verify the, the width of the handle, we'll put our, our second snap, our snap head, right uh, on this outer part. And we're gonna leave a little bit of extra material or extra leather so we can flick that snap off and then drop the knife out. Now I know what you're saying, well what if you're, well Dan, if you're in the woods and you're, you know, you've got all this gear and you're rummaging around, what if you flick that snap by accident and the snap comes unbuckled and you lose the knife? So inadvertently you end up losing it anyway. Not going to happen because what we're going to do is we're going to take some, uh, some leather lace and I have some finer leather lace that you can use for stitching or for just lacing stuff. It basically looks like a leather boot lace. But what I did was I drilled a second very small hole. I'm sorry, I punched a very second small hole. It's kind of below that strap, so the strap covers it a little bit, but that lace is gonna have both ends of the lace going through that hole, and it's gonna make the lace fit very tight through there, so friction will kind of hold that lace in place. But we're gonna leave a big loop on this side, and that allows us to pull the loop up over the handle, and then you can grab the lace from the inside of this belt loop and pull it tight and friction will keep it really tight around that knife handle. So you'll have your snap and your strap, but you'll also have this optional uh, lace loop that goes up around the knife and pulls tight. German Bowie knives always used to have these, uh, these lace uh, loop straps to hold the knife in the sheath because classic German Bowie knives always kind of sat on the hip uh, the Bowie blade was usually nine inches or better, so it was really unlikely that a, a blade would bounce up out of a sheath. And if you make your sheath nice and tight like I do, the channel for the blade within there is fit pretty snug and secure, so the knife doesn't really bounce around a lot. It isn't loose. Usually you can hang your sheath upside down and shake it, and the blade won't even pull out. You want that leather to be nice and snug around the blade, so you've got to give it a good tug to pull that blade out. And that's essentially what we've done here. So... You know, I, one would argue that, you know, when this is carried vertically, you might not even need a retention strap. The blade's probably not going to go anywhere. It's a long blade. Uh, this is a, uh, boy, I believe this is like a 15 inch plus blade. I can't remember last time I measured it was like 15 and change, but, uh, and I ground it down quite a bit too. So I'm pretty sure it's over 15 inches in length. So the blade edge, um, that's a big blade. It's very unlikely this blade's going to come bouncing out of the sheath, unless you're hanging it vertically on your body. It has a very good likely chance that if that retention strap came undone, that it could slide out. So that's why we included the lace. But I'm going to get back to finishing this up. And uh, please, you know, keep an eye on my, uh, my finished work here. I would love to share with you the, uh, the German hunting saber. Uh, I've leaked a few videos of the, um, of the etching. Uh, of the uh, 22 layer um, Japanese uh, white paper, Hitachi white paper core steel. It is absolutely fantastic Sanmai Warkonomi steel. Um, it's, a, it's a high performance steel and it's, a, it's great for a blade like the uh, German hunting saber that I've made. Um, we've got a nice stag handle with olive burl spacer. We've also got some uh, Randall style fiber spacers in there as a nod to JW Randall. I'm a big fan of his work. I'm also a big fan of Carl Linder, which inspired me to uh, to make a German hunting saber. I love Carl Linder's work. His uh, classic uh, Linder Bowie knives are just uh, really, really set my gears in motion to uh, to want to make uh, German style Bowie knives. And uh, well, I should say American Bowie knives, but German made Amer American style Bowie knives are uh, are really what drew me toward making uh, making custom cutlery. So. Keep tuned. I will be sharing the finished product very shortly. We'll probably do a cut test video. We'll chop some crap up and uh, put it to work. So I'll uh, show you what that 22 layer uh, work Nomi Steel can do. Back to stitching. Let me get this finished up. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan, Dark Angel Cutlery. Be good to each other. Peace.